Good morning, and welcome back now to the reading of God's Word. Uh, by now you know that we have moved out of the Old Testament, we are into the New Testament, and now we're into the four Gospels uh, written uh, at the time right after Jesus walked. So we're, we're studying his life at this point. And of course you know that these Gospels are called the Synoptic Gospels. They are basically four different Gospels written from different viewpoints by different people. So there's some differences in each one of these, and we'll identify the difference here in Mark. As we get into Mark, we're going to this week read uh, all of Mark, and we'll get into Luke. And we will discuss uh, some of the differences a little bit in, in how these people, who their audience was, and how they vision, and how they were writing to the audience. So it is an interesting look um, at these good news gospels as we get into it. In Galatians 4, chapter 4, and verses 4 and 5, Paul says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And this is the recording of the eyewitnesses to that event, to the to the, to the actual uh, manifestation of Christ that came to us. So you already know that we've got all four Gospels, and we already have discussed a little bit about the, about the, the similarities or the synoptic part of it. It's the same story, uh, but, it's, but, but told differently. And you have to take these four Gospels collectively. Uh, if you just read one and leave it, you leave out part of the story. So you need to look at all four Gospels together each time you, you do any kind of a study in there because they do cross over uh, a lot, and there's a lot told. There's some things that are, that are in some Gospels that are not in the others. So you have, to, you have to use all of that together. And Mark and Luke uh, generally tell of the birth and some of the... Some of the um, uh, the early life of Jesus, yet, or excuse me, Matthew and Luke, Mark and John really are concentrated more on the ministry of Christ. They start at, bab at the baptism and temptations. So um, that, there's a little bit of difference there uh, in some of the, some of the writings there. Uh, Mark is probably written from Rome and written to the Gentiles that are in Rome, uh, the Christians there, so that the, the, um, the uh, genealogy that is in Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3 are not recorded in Mark because those Gentiles would have had no real interest in, in the genealogies of Christ. So they, he kind of moved on, and, and, and they were... Um, he was more um, involved in Mark was more involved in the uh, actions or the or the works of Christ rather than the history part and also uh, not so much of the teachings that are recorded in Matthew and Luke. So there's a little bit of difference there uh, in concentrating more on the on the works. Heart. It's, it's like who this guy really is, what he did, and, and he, he, he was in control of all things completely unnatural over healings of diseases, over uh, leprosy, or um, paralytics, demonic forces. Uh, Mark records a lot of these in, in his writing. One of the key verses here in the book of Mark is in chapter 10 and verse 45. And it says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. This is a dividing point. This is Christ coming for two purposes. One, to serve, and the other is to be the sacrifice for us. He, became, he began by, by teaching us a lot in his, in his life about how we should act, what we should do. But then in this verse, in 1045, he transitions over to being the sacrifice for us. And, and we, we will look into that in the next video. This, week, this video, for now, we're going to be looking at verses, chapters um, 1 through 10 
these next two days and we will um, concentrate more on his service and the works that he has done. So Mark begins in the Gospels with John the Baptist. He, he, he moves really fast here. He moves from John the Baptist. He goes through Jesus' baptism, his temptations. He goes through choosing his disciples. And then he moves quickly into the works. And so um, we begin here looking at chapters 1, um, really starting at 1 verse 21 through 3 verses 12. Mark records Jesus' display of power over the demons and diseases, healing everyone he touched. And he was going out through the regions now, and, and he was unmistakable as he was going. And a lot of, he began to draw a lot of crowds coming to follow him. Keep in mind, he is this right now, it is in his servitude. It is his he's being the servant and, and doing his work at this point. Along with some of the teaching, Mark doesn't really get deep into the teachings, but he does, he does uh, uh, record the parables and some of the teachings along the way. So you'll run into those as well. And in chapter 3, verses 13 through 20, he calls his disciples. And it should be noted here that um, when he went and, and um, dined with Matthew, when he was calling the disciples, he as he called Matthew, Levi, and he went in and dined with the tax collectors, and that set off the Pharisees and the and, and the priest and the, and the scribes, and they they like, well, this is not good. So he is dining with the sinners, and that was one of the first advents that that he did to uh, to really become an adversary to the religious leaders that he knew he was going to go into battle with. Uh, in the end, and, and obviously in the end, as we get through all of the different synoptic gospels, of course it winds up with his trial, crucifixion, but it, but he, he overcomes all of that with his resurrection. So he, he, he knew what he was going to do. He knew who he was going to get into it with as he went along. So from, then we move on in from chapters 3, verses 22 to chapter 434, Mark begins to record some of the teachings and some of the parables. He didn't go deep into them, but he, he did go some of them. Remember, Mark got a lot of him, his information from Peter. Uh, Mark was not the necessarily, the, he wasn't an eyewitness to everything that Jesus did. So uh, much of what he wrote came from Peter. So um, it was a little bit different how he was approaching. Plus the audience was different. Remember that his, his audience was the Gentile Christians in Rome. So, but his teachings were very important as well. Uh, he, he did record a good bit of them. Then in chapters 4, verse 35, all the way through chapter 9, verse 50, Mark records many and many of the works and his power, his power over, um, over the demonic forces, over healings, raising the dead, deaf, um, the deaf could hear, the blind could see. All that that he told uh, John's disciples to go back and tell him whenever John wanted to know about, is this really the Christ? And yes, I am. And so he was doing all of this. Mark records a lot of this in these, in these chapters, and he will continue to record them as he goes on. But after we get into, into chapter 10, though, we're going to transition from the servant side of Christ to the sacrifice side of Christ. That'll be in the next video. And it is plain to see that Jesus has an attitude of servitude and he is teaching us in this, in this display, he's teaching us how we should be living our lives. And, and he is an example uh, for what we should be doing. And although we do not have the power that Jesus had when he was uh, performing all of these miracles, we do have the power of prayer and we want to remember that the power of prayer which moves the hand which has the power to do things and that is the power of god and james tells us in 5 16 that um, the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much and he also tells us in chapters 1 verses 5 if you lack wisdom let him ask of god and he will give to him gives to who to whom it can use it. So it is a, James gives us a, tells us right away, you know, if you, if 
Prayer is powerful. We need to use it. You will see Paul talking about prayer all the time, and he used it. So we have that same access. So as we go through reading Mark, we're going to see all of this servitude, his power. We'll see some of his teachings. We will see more of his teachings. You just read last week more of his teachings in Matthew, and you will get again into a lot of the teachings in Luke, but you will really get deep into it in John. John is more of a, the spiritual aspect of Christ rather than the works side of Christ. Though Mark did, though John did uh, record seven of the major miracles. So we do have access to the power of God if we know how to use it. So in the next video, we're going to move again from the servitude, from the servitude of Christ to the sacrifice of Christ. And so enjoy this reading. Uh, read it carefully. If you have time, do a little crosswalk with the other Gospels because the, all, there's a lot of notes that you'll run into in your, in your Bible about this, this is the same uh, event recorded in Matthew, the same event recorded in Luke. Uh, so you'll see that along the way. So do that. Pray that God will give you insight to it. Pray that he will give you understanding and you will be able to apply these truths to your lives. So with that, May God bless the reading of his word.